OK, so whether or not you've watched the videos that are already up, um, I want to make sure that I cover some of the questions I didn't get time to cover on Saturday so that so that you will have that available to you and all the rest of the people I teach will have that available to them. However, I want to do the intro problems so that I can show you the method, the method, the method for doing for solving radical equations. As always, there's a stepwise method, and if you follow that method, no matter what, you can get the problem right after a number of times of getting it wrong because you want to practice, practice, practice. And as with everything in math, this is scarier than it looks. OK, so let's do the first problem in your homework. Number one. Well, number one. Wake up. Number one. OK, we're going to do X minus seven. Equals the square root of X minus five. This is called a radical equation because duh. You've got. A radical in the equation. Um, let me move this over. No, I guess I can't. All right, there's there's a method here. The first thing you have to do is make sure you have one of your radicals isolated all by itself on one side of the equal sign or the other. It's already set up this way. So now comes the second step which is to square both sides of the equation. So you square the entire left side and you square the entire right side. And the reason you do that is that you have a square root here. If you had a cube root, you'd cube both sides, but you don't. You have a square root, so you're going to square both sides. And since those are inverse operations, it's like they're matter and antimatter. Kaboom. They knock each other out. And so you're left with the radicand. Now let's let's go over what's really happening here just so you don't think it's math magic. When I square both sides, this is what I get. This, on the inside of the parentheses, can also be written as x minus 5 to the 1 half. That's what a square root is. You can, it's, it's the same exact thing and you're going to square it, which means you multiply the powers. Two times one half is one. So this is X minus five to the one power, which is X minus five. So it's not really matter and antimatter. It's just a quick way of looking at it. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to square a binomial. So we've got to do this. All right. So this is going to be X squared minus 7x minus 7x plus 49 equals x minus 5. Now before I drag everything over to where the x squared term is positive, I'm going to combine these like terms. That'll be x squared minus 14x 
plus 49 equals x minus 5. All right, now I have to have a zero over here to be able to solve a quadratic equation. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract x and add 5 and add 5. The reason being that x minus x is zero, negative five plus five is zero. So zero plus zero is zero. That gives me a zero over here. Now I'll be left with x squared minus 15x. 49 plus five is 54. Okay, well that's nice and factorable. 54 can be factored into a number of different factor pairs, but among them we'll have negative six times negative nine and negative six plus negative nine is negative 15, which is the middle number there. So I can factor this into x, x minus 6 minus 9. And then, as always, when I'm solving a quadratic equation, I set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So plus six plus six, x equals six, plus nine plus nine, x equals nine. Okay, it looks like my answers are six and nine. But, These are the answers to x minus 7 squared equals the square root of x minus 5 squared. They're not necessarily the answer to the original equation. And that's a problem. We have to check every answer you get when you're solving a radical equation because you can get something called extraneous answers. Extraneous solutions, rather, that's the proper term. These are the solutions to what we got down here, which is x squared minus 15x plus 54 equals zero. Um, not the original equation, which is x minus 7 equals the square root of x minus 5. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to check our answers. Always. All right, we're going to check for x equals 6. And we're going to check for x equals 9. It's kind of obnoxious, I know, but we have to do it. So, x minus 7. All right, I've got, to, I've got to do this, but then I'll scroll up. Okay. All right, so if x equals six, I'm going to have six minus seven equals the square root of six minus five. Six minus seven is negative one. Six minus five is one. So negative one equals the square root of one, which is one. And this is false. Negative one and one are two different numbers. 
And that means six is extraneous. That's an important word you need to learn because you're going to see it on some of the homework problems. Sometimes you have to state what the extraneous solutions are and what the actual solutions are. You never know, all right? You never know whether both answers will check or both answers will not check or one will check and the other won't. So we have to always check both, both answers. So let's come over here. Nine minus seven equals the square root of nine minus five. Nine minus seven is two. The square root of nine minus five is the square root of four, and the square root of four is two, so we have two equals two, which is true. What that means is that X equals nine is really the answer to the problem. And so you'll put that in your answer box. You'll see X equals and an answer box. You'll put your nine. And then you'll see good job. Or terrific. Or whatever my math lab is going to say to you for that particular problem. So let's look at what we did. I squared both sides of the equation. And then I really squared it, right? This is a binomial, so I have to say X minus seven times X minus seven, and then work this out and I got X squared minus 14 X plus 49. Meanwhile, when I square a square root, I get what's underneath. I dragged everything over to one side, set it equal to zero. That gave me a quadratic equation, which was factorable. So I solved it by factoring. However, if you have trouble factoring, you can always solve quadratic equations with the quadratic formula. It just takes longer. You're more likely to make mistakes. I find factoring easier most of the time, but not all the time. OK, so we checked our answers, found out that one answer just didn't work. It was extraneous. Doesn't mean it was wrong, but it's extraneous. And the other answer did work for the original problem. So that that gave us a true check. The left side equaled the right side. Two isn't the answer, nine is the answer, but this is the proof that nine really is the answer. And now we're ready to go on to the next problem. No, okay. Okay. Here we go. We've got the square root of 2x plus 7 equals, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, not this time, minus 2 equals x. Before we square both sides of the problem, we have to take an extra step, and that is isolate the radical. And the easiest way to do that 
is to add two to both sides. Move the two over to the other side. To say it non-mathematically. All right, so we'll have the square root of 2x plus 7, and be sure to pull out your radical sign to cover everything that's in the radicand. We'll have x plus 2 over here, and now this problem is just like the other problem. We're going to square both sides, and judging from the answer here, um, only one of the answers is going to be correct. So let's see what happens. I square the left, I square the right. That'll give me 2x plus 7 here, and it will give me x plus 2 times x plus 2. So we'll have 2x plus 7 equals, here we go again, x times x, x times 2, 2 times x, 2 times 2. So we'll have x times x is x squared, x times plus 2 is plus 2x, plus 2 times x is plus 2x, and plus 2 times plus 2 is plus 4. Now I am going to have to move these terms over there. That's how you solve a radical equation, not a radical, a quadratic equation. But first combine your like terms if you do that, you'll be much less likely to make a mistake. And Lord knows, I make enough mistakes. I don't need to increase my chances. In fact, I'll take a drink of coffee. <sighs> okay. So minus 2x. Minus 2x plus, uh, uh, minus seven, minus seven. So that's zero, that's zero, zero plus zero is zero. Over here, I'll have x squared, four x minus two x is positive two x, and plus four times minus seven, or positive four <laughs> times minus seven. Four minus seven is negative three or minus three. All right, well, let's look at negative three. Um, positive three times negative one is negative three and positive three plus negative one is positive two, and that's positive two. So this is factorable. All right, plus three, minus one. And then I set each factor t equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so we go through the whole rigmarole here. Minus 3, minus 3. X equals negative 3. And plus 1, plus 1. X equals 1. And now we have to check. It's not true that a negative answer will always be extraneous. It's not true at all. It depends on the problem. All right, so I go back to the original problem, the original, original problem. So I label this check. 
I have two answers to check. I have x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. And my original equation is the square root of 2x plus 7. Uh, minus 2 equals x. There we go. I need to make that bigger. All right, so I come over here. The square root of 2 times negative 3 plus 7 minus 2 equals negative 3. The square root of negative 6 plus 7 minus 2 equals negative 3. So that's the square root of positive 1 minus 2 equals negative 3. This is 1 minus 2 equals negative 3 negative one equals negative three. Ah, uh, those are different numbers. So this is false. Which means X equals negative three is extraneous. And you can remember this word pretty easily. If you look at the first five letters, which say extra. Extraneous just means an extra answer, an extra solution. So it's not really that bad a word. All right, now come over here. The square root of two times one plus seven minus 2 equals x, which is 1. So this is the square root of 9, minus 2 equals 1. The square root of 9 is 3, minus 2 equals 1, 1 equals 1, that's true. So x equals 1 is your solution. It's your only solution. So we'll come down here. As you'll discover when you do the homework, if you haven't done it already, if you put negative 3 and 1 in the solution box, my math lab counts it totally wrong. And if I'm grading it on a test, I do take off points because you only have one solution, not two. Okay. You know by now just to shout out if you've got a question, right? And so I want you to do that. Now, let's move on to two radicals, twice the fun. Not quite. This is problem number four in your homework. And I want to do this because in this one, both of the answers check. Both of the solutions check. So. We're going to have the square root of 4y plus 20 minus the square root of y minus 4 equals 6. Okay.
I have to isolate one of the radicals. So it doesn't matter which one, but I just think life would be easier if I go ahead and add the one that's being subtracted to both sides. But again, it doesn't matter which radical you move as long as you move one of them. Now this zeroes out, and I'm left with that. Notice there is a GCF there, and so my first inclination is to factor out a GCF, but I'm not gonna get anything good out of it. It won't do a thing for me, so I'm not gonna do it. OK, just like before, and I'm going to do it with a different color this time. I'm going to square both sides now that I have one radical all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And then I've got these. Two friendly looking guys. To square over here, I square the complete left side and the complete right side. Well, over on the left, this is pretty easy, right? Because the square root and the square cancel each other out, leaving me with 4y plus 20. But over here, that's going to be another matter. 6 plus the square root of y minus 4 times 6 plus the square root of y minus 4. All right. I am going to have to use this method. Boom, boom, the boom, boom method. Boom, boom. The first time you have to do this with a square root there, it's really scary. It was for me when I was a student. Okay, 4y plus 20 is over here, and we're not going to do anything with it right now. But over here, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times plus the square root of y minus 4 is plus 6 times the, the square root of y minus 4. Plus the square root of y minus 4 times 6 is plus 6 times the square root of y minus 4 and plus the square root of y minus 4 times plus the square root of y minus 4 is plus the square root of y minus 4 squared. Okay, now we get to take a deep breath. <gasps> Four y plus twenty equals thirty six plus. Now I think this is the trickiest step. I have six square roots of y minus four, and I add another six 
square roots of y minus 4. How many square roots of y minus 4 do I have? Well, if I start with six of them and add another six, I now have 12 square roots of y minus 4. Meanwhile, over here, I have the square root of y minus 4 squared. Again, the square and the square root are going to cancel each other out, leaving me with what's underneath. y minus 4. And that's what I've got right now. Okay, back to work. All right, I have, I have two like terms. Before I decide on what I'm gonna do, let's add the 36 and the minus four. All right, so that'll be 32. There you go. This is what I've got now. I've got a radical equation. I have to start my steps all over again and isolate the radical on one side of the equal sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 32. That'll be 4y minus 12 equals, well, this is zero. 12 times the square root of y minus 4. Now I need to square both sides, but you know how much I hate bigger numbers. Now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I still have a GCF. going to write this as 4 times y minus 3. Why would I do a silly thing like that? Because this is 12 times y minus 4. These are multiplied. These are multiplied. I can divide both sides by 4. Boom, and then 4 goes into 12 three times. Any time you make your numbers smaller, you're less likely to make a mistake. On the left, I'll have y minus 3. On the right now, I'll have 3 times the square root of y minus 4. Now, when I square both sides, just looking ahead, I'll have a 9 there. 3 squared is 9. If I had not changed this, if I had left this 12 times the square root of y minus 4 and squared that, I would have had 144 times y minus 4. 3 and 1, 144, there's a big difference in size there. I could still get the problem right, but why make life harder when I can make it easier? Okay, so here we go. 
To get rid of that radical, I have to square both sides and square both sides. That will leave me y minus 3 times y minus 3. But over here, I will have, these are multiplied, so I could even put another set of parentheses in here. This is going to give me 3 squared times what, uh, the square root of y minus 4 squared, which will give me 9 times y minus 4. Oops, oops. And this will give me y squared minus 3y minus 3y plus 9. So I'll have y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals, I'm going to distribute here, 9y minus 36. Again, I load everything over to the other side. Minus 9y, minus 9y, plus 36, plus 36. This is zero, this is zero. Boom. So y squared minus 15y plus 44? No, 45. Okay, 45 equals 9 times 5. But, what did I do? Oh, hmm. all right. 45 also equals three times 15. What have I done? Because nine, nine, well, negative nine plus negative five is negative 14, not 15. But nine plus 36 is 45, right? Uh, may I say something? Sure. Uh, so if we go back to where, let me see here. I think whenever we were adding 32 with the negative 4, we missed out a Y. Oh, no, you're right. It's right up there. Yeah, we missed out a Y. Ah. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um... So I would have subtracted y, and I would have subtracted y, and that would give me 3y. All right, all right. So we're going to pull out 3 as a common factor. And if I do that, I'll have three out here. And there'll be a four in here, right? Three times four is 12. And then I'll divide by three. Three goes into 12 four times.
So I'll have four over here. Four, four, 16. So I'll have 16y minus 64. Is that right? Yeah, it is. All right. So let's just get rid of the rest of this. We'll just do the last two lines over, and that won't be too horrible, I hope. Okay. So this, that's gonna be a four. This is where it pays to have all your steps written down, even though you have to, you have to write more, it's easier to see the cost of your mistake. Okay, minus four Y minus four Y, ah, okay. Minus four times minus four is plus, 16. And so we'll have y squared minus 8y plus 16 equals 16y minus 64. And then I drag the stuff over and pray. All right, so I'll have a minus 16y and a plus 64. So I'll have y squared minus 24y plus six plus four is 10 and 80. All right, now 80. Yep, four times 20, duh. Excuse me while I duh myself. All right, 80 is going to equal negative four times negative 20, and negative four plus negative 20 is negative 24. Yes. Thank you, sir. Y minus four y minus 20 y minus 4 equals 0 y minus 20 equals 0 a uh, y equals 4 y equals 20 Whew. all right let us check this by going back to the original equation, which I can't see way down there. Ooh. 
OK, we're going to check. Well, of course, we already know that both answers work. But you wouldn't know that ahead of time. So OK, the square root of 4 times 4 plus 20 minus the square root of 4 minus 4 equals 6. So this is 16 plus 20 under the radical. Minus 0 equals 6. The square root of 36 equals 6. 6 equals 6. True. So y equals 4 works. And now you might expect this to not work, but both, both can work. 4 times 20 plus 20 minus the square root of 20 minus 4 equals 6. So the square root of 80 plus 20 minus the square root of 16 equals 6. This is the square root of 100 minus the square root of 16 equals 6. 10 minus 6, <laughs> 10 minus 4 equals 6, 6 equals 6. And that's true. So if you do your arithmetic correctly, or don't forget any Ys, that's a dangerous little bugger there. Um, 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 yeah, you can have both answers working so that your answer box would say y equals four and 20. And now it's completely right. So it's important for you to see this. And it's important for you to see the next one, which I did not do for the other class, so it's not in the video. It'll be in your video. And that's this one. Which looks for all the world like this one. But now there's no solution. I mean, if you look ahead, that's why I wanted to be sure to do this. You just never know. OK, so we have the square root. We have the square root. Of 3x minus 3. Plus the square root of 2x plus 8 plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so the first step is to isolate one of my radicals. Doesn't matter which one. So since that one comes first, I might as well do that one. So I'm going to subtract the square root of 2x plus 8 and subtract 1 from both sides, minus the square root of 2x plus 8 minus 1. So 
So we have the square root of 3x minus 3 equals, they're both negative, negative the square root, yes, 2x plus 8 minus 1. Okay. Ugh. Now, we've got to square both sides. However, before I square this side, I do want to make it easier. So I'm going to pull out a negative GCF. And that's because I know Wait a minute. I know that with that times that, when I square this side, I'm going to be squaring that negative one and I'm gonna be squaring this in parentheses. So yeah, it'll be another step. Well, it doesn't have to be. This squared is 3x minus 3. So 3x minus 3 is going to equal negative 1 squared times the square root of 2x plus 8 plus 1 squared. Now, here's the whole reason that I did that little GCF thing. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So for all intents and purposes, it disappears. But not that one. Okay, so this will be one, but I'll actually write it out. Times the square root of 2x plus 8 plus 1. Times the square root of 2x plus 8 plus 1. So th So 3x minus 3 equals, all right, now, I've got a square root times a square root, a square root times 1, 1 times the square root, and 1 times 1. So the square root of 2x plus 8 times the square root of 2x plus 8 is the square root of 2x plus 8 squared. The square root of 2x plus 8 times plus 1 is plus the square root of 2x plus 8. And plus 1 times the square root of 2x plus 8 is plus the square root of 2x plus 8. And plus 1 times plus 1 is plus 1 squared, which is plus 1. And I could always put a squared there, it wouldn't hurt, just to keep everything clear. So 3x minus 3 equals now, we know that when you square radical, the radical comes off and you're left with what's underneath 2x plus 8. And then plus, I have one square root plus another square root, that's two square roots, of 2x plus 8. And then plus 1. 
and 8 plus 1 is 9. So 3x minus 3 equals 2x plus 9 plus 2 times the square root of 2x plus 8. All right, now I've got a radical left, still a radical equation. I have to isolate that radical, so I'll subtract 2x. And I'll subtract 9. Two X minus two X is zero, nine minus nine is zero. I'm left with two times the square root of two X plus eight. Over here, three X minus two X is one X, and negative three plus negative nine is negative or minus 12. Okay. Now I'm going to square both sides, but notice I don't have a GCF now. Oh well. So I'm going to square the left and square the right, which over here will give me X minus 12 times x minus 12. And over here will give me 4 times 2x plus 8. I squared that, I squared that. So this will be x squared minus 12x minus 12x plus 12 squared, which is 144, equals 4 times 2x is 8x, and 4 times 8 plus 8 is plus 32. So I will have x squared minus 24x plus 144 equals 8x plus 32, and then I'll subtract 8x and subtract 8x and subtract 32 and subtract 32. 0, 0, 0. So x squared uh, minus 32x. All right, 4 minus 2 is 2. And 14 minus 3 is 11. And that's a plus. So now we have to check out 112, see if it's factorable. Um, and I am going to use the calculator for that. Use our wonderful little system. Okay, I'll have 112. divided by x, and then y2 is x plus 112 divided by x. And then second, well, let me take a photo of this. Hmm. 
ん。あ。いや、取れるからいいや Now, second, I already hit second graph. And now I want to find negative 32. I see positive 32, so that's hopeful. Negative 32, right here. Ah, oh, thank God. Okay. Now, what this does, let me take a photo of this also. See the negative 4 and the negative 28 and the negative 32. So x minus 4 times x minus 28 equals 0. which gives me x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 28 equals 0. So x equals 4, and x equals 28. And I'm in a hurry, and I want to skip checking, but remember that you don't know officially that neither of these answers works. They're both extraneous. So we have to check them, we have to. So we're gonna have x equals four and x equals 28. And we're going to have the square root of 3x minus 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 8 plus 1 equals 0. So over here, the square root of 3 times 4 minus 3 plus the square root of 2 times 4 plus 8 plus 1 equals 0. This will be the square root of 12 minus 3 plus the square root of 8 plus 8 plus 1 equals 0. The square root of 9 plus the square root of 16 plus 1. You can already tell that's not going to be 0. 3 plus 4 plus 1 equals 0. 12 plus 1. No, no, no. 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 1 is 8. They don't equal each other. So that would mean that X equals four is extraneous. And now we do the same thing with 28. The square root of three times 28 minus 3 plus the square root of 2 times 28 plus 8 
plus one. equals zero. So what is that? Three times eight is 24. Three times two is six plus two is eight. Does that look right? Minus three plus two times 28 is 56. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. Yes, bothers me. Two times 28, 56. All right, plus eight, plus one equals zero. So that's 81. Square root of 81 plus the square root of 64 plus one equals zero, that's nine, plus eight plus one equals zero. Uh, 17 plus one is 18 equals zero, and that also is false. Is there no justice in the world? So that can happen. I just wanted to show you it can really happen. Now, in the last few minutes, I'm going to do one of these word problems, which are over there. OK. So the one that students find the hardest most difficult is the one about the pendulum, um, which in old fashioned clocks, that's straight. And there's this thing and it goes tick tock, tick tock. So let's put it up here and let's put it up here. So here's our tick, and here's our talk. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. All right, just to, um, okay. This talks about the period of the pendulum, and it's given in time. T is the period of the pendulum. What that is, is the time it takes to go from tick to talk and back to tick. All right, so tick and tick again. That's what one period is. Tick and back to tick. Tick, talk, tick. That's what the period of a pendulum is. And what we have here is a formula. T equals two pi. That's automatically scary, right? Times the square root of L over 32, where L is the length of the pendulum. And that's what they're asking about. This formula can be used to find the period T in seconds of a pendulum of length L in feet. What is the length of the pendulum that has a period of 3.2 seconds? So we know what T is. T is 3.2. What we need to find is L, but L is underneath the radical. No panic. They also tell us that we can just use 3.14 for pi. 
so not a real challenge there. 3.2 equals 2 times 3.14 times the square root of L over 32. So that's going to be 3.2 equals 6.28 times the square root of L over 32. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6.28. So we're isolating the radical. This is something you do with word problems that you, you wouldn't necessarily do with um, a straight off math problem. And here it is. And for word problems, it's really important that you do not just say, OK, 3.2 divided by 6.8 and get a number. Don't do that. You're going to have to force yourself and it's going to become more and more important that you wait until the end of the problem to throw everything into your calculator. Okay, and the square root of L over 32 is the square root of L over the square root of 32. Actually, I didn't have to do that, so I'm going to undo it. Big. OK, now I'm going to square the left. And square the right and don't put it in your calculator yet. Just leave it like this. I'll explain the reason in a minute. OK, the square root and the square cancel each other out. OK, now. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this. Let me move this over. There. Both sides by 32. And that'll give me L. This is what L equals. 32 times 3.2 over 6.28. Whoop, square. Why didn't I put it in my calculator earlier? And here's the answer. Every time you put a number in the calculator, if it's a decimal, a long decimal, you're going to have round off error. And then every time after that, you're just increasing the round off error, increasing it, increasing it, so that you can actually get the wrong answer, even though you did everything right. It's called round off error. It's a very big danger. So to limit the amount of error in your answer, you want to wait until the end of the problem to throw it all in the calculator, which is what I'm going to do right now. Second quit. OK, I, I'm not going to write it. I'm going to type it. 32 parentheses. 3.2 divided by 6.28 parentheses closed squared. There now, that's just what I have here. I hit enter. 
Okay. That's what I've got. Let me put it in your notes. Ah, there. All right, now I have to read down under here and in my math lab, the instructions for how to answer are in blue. Round to the nearest hundredth. That means two decimal places. So here is my first decimal place. Here is my second decimal place. Now I look over at the third decimal place to see if it's big enough to round that zero up to a one, and it is. So the answer my math lab wants in the answer box is 8.31 feet. That looks like I'm saying 0.32, so I'm going to put parentheses around it. It's not point, it's 32. Okay, the other word problem has to do with traffic accidents. And what happens when you're speeding? You get a nice officer out there measuring your skid marks. And here's the formula for that. So if anybody here is in public safety is their major, there's the formula, it's not hard at all. And so all you're being asked to do is use this formula to find out how long the skid marks are for a car going 20 miles an hour, not too fast. You're crawling, but look at that. It's going to be 20 feet. Now in your version, it's not going to be that. OK, that's it for today. Stick around if you have questions. If not, I'm going to stop recording. Well, even if you are, I'm going to stop recording. But I've had a wonderful day with you, and I'll see you again Wednesday, and I look forward to receiving any emails with your questions.